Hello. Today I'll briefly talk about how to structure a scholarly academic paper in humanities which uses literary theory. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, I make this into a final paper project for most of my graduate students and some of my advanced uh, undergraduate students. And in my experience, most of the times they have a lot of questions about what exactly is it that I want them to do. So this brief lecture is about, um, based in my own experience, how effectively can we use any theoretical insights or theories in writing an academic paper. And I'll be using one of my own papers, uh, which I published about Osman Sembin's God's Bits of Woods a few years back as an example. So the best way you can use this video then is uh, to have that paper in front of you. And I'll post a link to that in the description so that you can follow as to what I'm saying, because I'll be using that paper as a sort of heuristic device. So before I go into details of how to use theory, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is to remind ourselves as to what not to do when you're using theory. So I've noticed uh, a lot of times what people do is they pick up a theoretical insight or a, theorist, a theorist's work and then try to prove that that theory exists in a novel. Uh, now that uh, exercise is completely defangs theory itself because the purpose of theory isn't to locate it within a text. In my opinion, the purpose of theory is one, of course, is to use it as a tool to open up a text, right? To say something about a text from a theoretical perspective, to look at it through a theoretical lens. Now that might sound very complicated. But think of it, we all do that in every single day in our lives. Our idea of the world, what we think of it, is theoretically informed. These are theories that we have internalized, right? So if we are looking at a news uh, item and having a certain way of thinking about it, that view is ideologically constructed, it's discursively constructed, and we are unpacking that information with that theoretical knowledge. What is it that we privilege as truth? What is it that we privilege as proper? So in our life, we are trained to employ these theoretical insights to read real life situations. So in academia then, Maybe we need to be more precise, but the general idea is the same. We, we gather this theoretical knowledge, we try to understand it, and then with that understanding, we try to read a novel or a short story and write about it. That's what you do in real life. That's what you're doing in a paper. The only difference is that in the paper, you'll have to use precise vocabularies of a particular theory, its understanding. So. What not to do basically is to assume that somehow you can pick up a theory and then suggest to the readers that it exists in a novel. I think that will never make an exciting paper. So in terms of structuring, and this is where it would be good for you to pull up the paper that I mentioned, which is in the description about Osman Sembin. The first part, one paragraph mostly, of your article should be basically just introducing the novel. And what do you introduce about it? You know, published in such and such year, Osman Sembin's God's Bits of Words is a novel that tells the story of a labor strike. Let's say that's your introductory part of your essay. Don't write long introductions, just you're placing the reader, you're bringing the reader to the text that you're going to be talking about. And immediately after that brief introduction, you can then introduce using Frederick Jameson's concept of ideology. I will be suggesting that this novel can be a great didactic tool for the modern resistance movements. That's my thesis in a way. So you've just introduced the novel briefly, and then you introduce which theoretical tool are you going to use and what do you want to draw from the text using that tool, right? 
Now, the next paragraph or two then should be you explaining your understanding of the theory, theory itself, right? I'm going to use Jameson's concept of ideology. This is what Jameson says about it. You quote him directly or paraphrase him. And then you explain your understanding of it. How do you understand his theorization? And why is it important for you to use it in reading this novel? Because your reader is expecting that, right? Before that was your thesis already, which was to read the novel as a didactic tool for resistance, right? So you explain your theory. There is another reason you're explaining your theory. You are also sh showing the potential reviewers of your article that you understand the theory that you're using, one, and two, if they have an opinion about your misuse of theory or you having missed something by precisely explaining your understanding of it, you're also telling your readers and your reviewers that this is the precise understanding of this theory or theoretical concept that you are applying. Now, if there are different ways of reading the same concept by some other writers and scholars, you can always add a footnote where you say, I'm aware that so-and-so has read it differently, but my reasons of reading it this way are these. So you can explain those in a footnote because then there will be no one objection from your reviewers that you have missed a certain reading of the theory itself. Now, after you've laid out your introduction, your brief introduction of your theory, your explanation of it, then you go to, in most articles, you give an account of previous works, who has written about that novel, right? Just pick up four or five best articles, uh, preferably recently published, and then point out the main points of what other people have said. Now, if you are building up on, your argue, on their argument, point out here is where you are adding to what someone else has written about the novel. Now, if you have you think that someone has completely misread the novel and you're citing them, you know, be generous and kind. Someone worked on the novel. They could have misread it or misused uh, a term. Uh, you can be generous and polite even in your indictment of someone who might have not done justice to the text. And there are pragmatic reasons for it because, you know, these people work in your field. You will someday encounter them. And, and there are also philosophical reasons behind it, and that is that you want to be a generous scholar, a kind scholar who acknowledges other people's efforts because you're building on it. But two or three paragraphs which give an account of who has written about the novel, what have they said about it, and where is your intervention coming in, and how are you rereading with that knowledge in mind? So this structure is usually accept, expected by reviewers in pretty much all humanities journals. And, you know, take some time. You've already explained your theory. You've laid out your introduction, your thesis. You've, intro you've introduced your theory, and you've explained it. And then you have now given an account of who has written what about the novel or about the section. Then the most important thing, which a lot of people forget, is signposting. And what do I mean by it? Tell your reader at the end of a paragraph when you're concluding a part of your discussion, give them a brief account of what you've done. Here, I've already discussed the concept of ideology. And I will now move into the discussion of solidarity in the novel. Right? So that's signposting you telling them what you're planning to do, but also give them a reason. Why is it important for you to go there, right? So that the reader is more primed to reading the next part of your essay. So as you've laid down, laid out your paper, you gave a brief introduction of the novel, you told the reader which theoretical tool will you be using to read it. You've explained your theory and specifically, how do you understand it? How do you plan to apply it and why? Then you have given an account of who has published about the novel recently, what have they said about it, and where do you come in to add more knowledge to that discussion. And then at every stage when you move from one part of the essay to the other part of the essay, 
you are signposting, you're clearly telling what you've done here, right? And where you're headed next and why. That's very important. And never be hesitant to put that in there because the readers imperceptibly will be expecting that and will be guided by those signposts. And then we get into the biggest part of your essay. And that is, you know, the discussion or you've laid out your theory, you've introduced the text, the works that came before you. And here you use that theoretical tool. So in my case, in this essay that you will be using with this lecture, my argument was that ideology allows us to crystallize one or two major themes in a given time frame. Right. And I chose solidarity as the ideology that I was going to apply to the novel. Why? The novel is about a strike, a successful railway workers strike. But my argument is that for a strike to function within a given space, the solidarity must be total. And it must not be enforced top down, but it must be, you know, on a granular level. It, the solidarity must be across different classes and regions. Because think of the logic of strike breaking. How do you break a strike? You bring in people who are not striking and may get, pay them some extra money and they do the work that the workers were going to do. So any system in which you can do that, you'll be able to break a strike. So solidarity is the absolute must. And across the board, solidarity for a stri strike to be successful and so knowing that concept, then I can read the novel from the point of view of how that solidarity is built because the Docker strike was extremely successful. Most of the times we also attribute the success of any movement to one leader or the other. And even though we are introduced to a main character, Ibrahim Bakayaku, who is supposed to be the leader of this strike, we meet him towards the end of the novel when he makes one famous speech and he makes that speech because people ask for it. So, so the novel then also dispels this idea of a top-down revolutionary movement, right? And so solidarity itself then becomes something that keeps the strike together, but keeps the narrative structure of the novel together. But also it teaches us, the readers of today, your students in your classroom, that for any popular movement to succeed against powers that be, that kind of solidarity in a given space would be absolutely essential. So on the whole, in your discussion, then you're discussing what happens within the novel. But you're also then teaching your readers that if we read this novel carefully, the novel itself becomes a didactic tool through the experiences of its characters to teach us how to mobilize resistances in the world in which we live, how to organize these, but also how to keep in mind that lateral solidarities are the most essential part of the success of any movement against power. So overall, I know this is not a very long lecture and maybe not all too exhaustive, but if you read the essay, that I have linked in the description and go step by step, then you can see that what I've just told you of laying down an introduction, introducing your theoretical concept, explaining your theory, then explaining what other people have said about the novel, and then you using that knowledge, then the heart of your discussion of the novel itself, connected to your thesis, and then what does it do for the general reader or for the general public as a didactic tool would roughly then become the structure of your essay. And this is a structure that would be useful to you in writing about any novel, using any theory, as long as you're using literary theory to write about a novel, you can roughly follow this structure. And I hope that it will be very successful for you. And the reason I posted this lecture here is because some of my students have used this essay as an example 
I don't consider it as a perfect essay or the best essay that I've written, but structurally speaking, they have found it useful. And I thought I should, you know, make this brief video lecture so that if anyone else wants to use this essay of mine as a structuring device for their own work, that it should be useful for them. I hope this was helpful. Um, and I hope uh, if you like what is being offered on this channel, that you will um, subscribe to it. If you have any questions, any concerns, anything that you would like to me to address in a future video, please post it in the comments. And as always, I'm grateful for your support. And if all goes well, I will see you next time. Thank you.